You know, I went through the entire summer this past year without driving one convertible. It's really depressing for me because I really like these cars and I usually can't fit in them. So it's really important for me to have a convertible during the summer to actually be able to get my head in there because I could drop the top. So damn it, I don't care if it's snowing, we're going to do a convertible. Our spotlight today is on this 2019 Mini Cooper S convertible Starlight Blue Edition. And that's right, folks. I don't really care if it's snowing out because we're going drop top this time and we're gonna be using it to its fullest potential, even though it is freezing cold outside. And I know it seems like a bit of a silly concept to be driving a convertible in the middle of the winter, but the reality is this is when BMW gave us the car and we also don't really predict the weather. So we didn't know it was gonna be snowing this week, but it is Quebec, so we should have expected it. But here's why I think it's exciting for us to be able to show you this car with weather like this. If you're a young car enthusiast, you might not be able to afford something like this and a winter beater. So your options are either buying something that you're maybe not super into that you can either drive year round or be able to afford a winter beater at the same time or you just splurge you get the thing that you really want and drive it all year round so bmw has put a great set of winter tires on this car so we're going to be putting it through its paces and finding out if this is the convertible for you Now, if you thought this is a silly concept, just wait until our driving segment. We haven't filmed it yet, but I have been driving this car for the past 24 hours. And I gotta tell you, I've had the drop top down and people here just don't understand it. They don't get why somebody like me is driving a convertible in the middle of winter. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. But let's get through the stuff that's important. I mean, if you're buying this car, you wanna know about it. As I mentioned, this is the Starlight Blue Edition, and you get a couple extra features for about $2,900 Canadian. It's pretty reasonable. And as far as I can tell, there's no limited run on it, so if you want it, you can get it. You don't have to worry about something like the BMW M2 Black Shadow that we did where they're only making 50 for Canada. This is just an added option. Now for 2,900 bucks, you basically get this Starlight Blue paint. I think it looks really good, and it has a really good contrast between the blue paint and the rest of the package, which basically blacks out all the chrome bits. So around the headlights are black, around the front grille is black. The rims would also be different. They'd be 17 inch rims exclusive to this package. Since they are winter tires, BMW's just put an old set of rims on there, but what can you do? And then around the back as well, you do have a blacked out rear end for the tail lights. So it looks really good. I think it gives this car a bit of a darker look to it. I really like it. I think it's a good combination between the two. And then as always, if you really do love the Union Jack, you can get those on your mirrors, on the vinyl top for the roof, on the back. The taillights actually do have the Union Jack built into it, which I think is really neat. And then the trunk portion folds flat. If you are a thinner person than me, up to about 176 pounds, you can sit on the back trunk area and use it as a picnic bench. If you have a girlfriend and she wants to sit on it, for me, I'm gonna be avoiding it. But let's talk about some of the features up here. There's really no active safety tech at all to talk about. It really is sort of in the middle here, the Mini Cooper S. It's got a twin scroll inline four engine, produces 189 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque. So not quite as much as the John Cooper Works Edition, but it's about 50 more horsepower over the regular Mini Cooper non-S. And I gotta say that the power to weight ratio is quite good for this vehicle. Some of the other housekeeping things to talk about, you have LED headlights up front with LED fog lights. The fog light portions are not automatic. We usually see that from BMW. So you have to push the button every time you wanna use it. And there are cornering lamps built in to the headlights, which I do like when it comes to mini. So when you're turning the wheels, they'll turn on. And if you're reversing, they'll turn on on both sides. The front grille is a little bit different with some air intakes at the bottom. Aside from that, you've basically got automatic wipers for the rain. We're gonna be using that a lot this week because of the snow, and that's about it. I mean, it has a good look to it. I mean, it looks like a mini, obviously, but when you put the roof down is when business starts to happen. So we're gonna jump in now, not that there's really much for me to do, right? I'm just going right through the roof there, but we'll talk about the few features on the inside, and then we're gonna to start to turn heads because I'm telling you, people didn't care about this car yesterday until I took the roof off. This is probably the easiest car I've had to film this year because there's no roof. I don't have to worry about lighting or camera position. I can just stick the camera wherever I want it and it'll work pretty well. Now we are on the inside here. It is a little chilly, but it's actually not too bad. The car says it's about three degrees, which makes sense. You're not usually gonna be using your car with the roof down in this way, but it is interesting to note the one change with iDrive with this car is it does have a rain warning alert. So it'll tell you 20 minutes or so before it starts raining 
that it's going to start raining and it'll tell you on your phone too if you have the mini app so if you have your roof down like we do right now and it's going to rain it'll give you a little notification to let you know that maybe you want to put it up so it's a little cool thing to have plus with the roof down there's nothing here to protect your head in the event of a collision there is an automatic rollover protection system in the back two beams will pop up from the rear just right where the headrests are and essentially be where the roof would be to help in case you're rolling over for whatever reason you fall down a cliff the safety system will deploy and hopefully save some lives with that. Plus, if you have the roof up, there is actually a bar that runs along the center, which would act as a much more reinforced top end than just having a regular vinyl roof like they used to do way back in the day. So a lot of safety going into this car, even though there's no active safety tech, things like that make sense. There's five airbags in the car as well to help protect you. And I mean, it is a small car. You're not really going to be injured too much, I guess, if you get into a small accident. You're not going to go anywhere, that's for sure. And especially somebody like me, I'm quite tight. And even my daughter doesn't quite fit in the back seat there. My wife was here this morning. The three of us were in the car. And it was an adventure, that's for sure. So it's a smaller car. I think this is going to be geared towards somebody who's single. Maybe you have a wife or a husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. If it's just the two of you, you guys want to go for a cruise, this is the car to do it in. If you're an older couple, you want to have something that's really cute. I like the look of it. No, don't get me wrong. It's a good looking car. But whoever's going to be driving it, it's probably going to be two people because the back seat space, even for a kid, is quite tight. And even if you put an adult back there, first of all, they're not going to fit. But if you put a kid, they're old enough that they don't need a booster seat, but they're not too old that you really should have them in the front anyway. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tight. So anyway, let's talk about the inside of this car quickly. There isn't much to go over, but if you've watched our episode on the 2018 John Cooper Works Countryman All 4, it should be pretty straightforward for you. There isn't a whole lot that's different. You've got the steering wheel. You can adjust it. It will also adjust your tachometer and speedometer here. The whole cluster will move with the steering wheel. For me, in my seating position, steering wheel is all the way up. Seat is all the way down. I can't see the top of it. I can see the numbers. I just can't see the lines on it. And really, if I sit properly as if I was driving, even the numbers are a little obscure. So it's hard to see. I've tried to adjust it as best I can. But most people who are going to be driving this are going to be smaller than I am. So something to note if you're a taller person, you might have that issue. Center console here, we love iDrive. We've talked about it with the other BMW cars. As I mentioned, it has the rainfall warning. It's really the only change. Wireless Apple CarPlay. So it works really well. You've got your ambient lighting. There isn't as much of it as we saw on the John Cooper Works Countryman All 4, just because there isn't a roof <laughs> to be able to speak of, right? We're all open here. So you have ambient lighting around the ring if you set it up that way. Lights above it, and then lights in the door handles and door cards. There's not a whole lot there. Automatic dual zone climate control up front. Heated seats for the front, they do get hot pretty quick. Automatic start and stop, you can turn it on or off. The start stop button we saw on the other model. Traction control, sport mode, couple USB cup holders, iDrive controllers, and a manual parking brake. Aside from that, you can still get this with the six speed manual. For this particular car, BMW's gone with the seven speed automatic. I found that it works well. I wouldn't complain too much about it. it doesn't have flappy paddles on the steering wheel, but it gets the job done again as a sport model. It's not the full-out John Cooper work, so you're probably not going to be looking at this one if you're really going for maximum performance. If you want a good cruising car, this definitely has a lot going for it. But now I want to take the car for a drive, because I am interested to see what people are going to say, especially now that it's snowed, because I took it out yesterday with the roof down, and I'm telling you, people just did not understand what I was doing. So now that it's snowed, theoretically, people should be even more confused. So let's take it on the road and talk about this car on the road, in the winter, with the roof down, something that you're probably not going to find anywhere else on YouTube, anywhere else on the planet, because nobody is stupider than me. I know I've mentioned that this is a little silly what we're doing. I guarantee you nobody is going to be buying this car to drive it with the roof down in the winter. I get that. We're just having a little bit of fun. It's not going to do anything to the interior of this car. I mean, it is all leather and... You know, hard material on the inside anyway so it's not going to do anything for us to be driving it in these conditions so don't worry don't get into the comments and start saying oh what are you doing with your car but let's talk about this car like i said it's not as quick as the john cooper works was but it's still a pretty quick car i'm really impressed with it but as somebody who doesn't really drive a lot of small cars it is fun to drive it's got a multi-link rear suspension so when you go over bumps especially a pothole something like that in this province they're pretty prevalent you don't feel it throughout the whole car it's localized to the side that you hit it on. It also handles surprisingly well. I mean, if you've watched any videos on minis before, you know that people talk about how they have go-kart-like handling. I mean, mini plays that up with their infotainment. They'll talk about that. It has sort of like an on-rails experience where wherever you point it, it'll go. And it certainly does that. We're not going to be doing anything really like that right now. 
As I mentioned, the tires on here are full-blown, 100% snow tires. They're brand new. I picked this car up with brand new snow tires, right? So what's the point of us doing anything silly with it when we could just have a nice drive and see what people think? But I mean, 189 horsepower for a car this small, it really does pick up quite well. If you're on the highway, there's no issues with passing. You just give it a little bit of acceleration and you go. And especially if you put it into sport mode, it really changes the throttle response. We'll do it right now. We were in the mid mode, which is what it'll start up as. But I find that with the sport mode enabled, it does have a bit higher threshold for when you put your foot on. See, not quite like a, a jump, but it, it's a little bit more sensitive than normal. And that's the way you want it, right? You want it in sport mode, you want to have a little bit more fun with it. So you want to have that instant response with the setup. And I think it should also disable the auto start stop. I don't believe it is on right now, but like some of the other cars that we've driven this year, it doesn't instantly turn off the second you come to a stop. There's a small delay, but it could be better. We actually talked about that a couple weeks ago with the Volkswagen Jetta, where it was like a two second delay, it was perfect. But that really is the question, right? We talked about that in the intro, and I wanna be able to answer that question for you. Is this a good car to be able to drive 365 days of the year? I'd say so, <laughs> again, you're not gonna be driving it with the roof down, but I mean, it is a fun car to drive. And I guarantee you, if we had more snow, it's not gonna have any problem, because as far as I'm concerned, a front wheel drive car will do better in the snow than a rear wheel drive car. Now, obviously all wheel drive is best and then ground clearance is good too because you can have snow and you can have all wheel drive but if your car is actually stuck into it ground clearance is what's going to help the most so if you compare this to something like a subaru which has all wheel drive ground clearance is going to be pretty similar obviously a subaru is going to be able to get out of stickier situations just a little bit better but for the most part there's really no complaints with a car like this now, if you do get the John Cooper works, you will have the paddle shifters. I think it's more fun than having the manual shift mode here. I just don't find it as fun. Put the car into sport mode, it'll act a little bit nicer. The transmission will hold a little bit longer, but I really prefer having paddle shifters, especially with a smaller car like this. I wanna just be able to chuck it into a corner and then to throw it into the next gear with the shifter built into my steering wheel instead of having to go down here. And that's just my preference. Obviously, if you're driving a manual, you're gonna be going down here anyway. But just for me, with an automatic, I'd like to have it there. So you get the John Cooper Works, you're gonna get that. And you can also add a couple other things to this car as well. Something like a head-up display would be a nice touch to have on this vehicle. I mean, the people who are gonna be buying this car don't care about the HUD, they don't care about all the active safety tech. It's more about the driving experience. And there's not a whole lot out there on the market that drives like a Mini. It's a very interesting car, very unique way for it to handle, very unique way just on the road in general. I mean, it looks so different. It has a different personality. And that's the thing, it has a personality. A lot of cars, they're just cars. It's four wheels, four doors, and a roof. This one, four doors, no. Roof, no. Wheels, yes. But it's a different vehicle. It really feels like it has its own soul. I really do like driving the Minis. And I'm excited to have a car like this in the middle of winter because it is an interesting car to drive when it's not perfect weather out. You're driving it year round, this is what you can expect with a roof. Now, I think I went through the entire year without wearing this hat on test drive in. Now, a lot of people that complain about it, they don't like it, but I gotta tell you that this is the only hat that keeps me warm on a day like today. It's minus two, minus three, according to the computer here. So it is chilly and I don't have a roof. So you're gonna have to deal with it if you don't like this hat, but give it a shot if you get cold these are the ones to go for now this is the only time also we've done a two-part driving segment for any car that we've ever done here on test drive and it's because it snowed i'm so happy i don't usually like the snow and outside of what i'm doing right now i absolutely hate it i don't like the snow at all and it reminded me today as i was plowing and shoveling it away that this part of the time of the year just sucks in general. I hate the weather, I hate the snow, I hate getting around when there's traffic, and I hate the lack of snow plowing that happens in this province. So yeah, there's a lot to hate, but what can you do? I'm driving a car that at least puts a smile on my face and puts the jaws of other people on the road on the ground, because I gotta say, it is a lot of fun driving this car with the roof down, only to get reactions from people. We had, uh, this is actually the second time I've gone out today. I went out earlier just to pick up some groceries. It was actively snowing during that time. And I gotta say that people were just confused. 
They had no idea what I was doing. I know I said that during our other driving segment, but more so. People giving me thumbs up. The younger kids, the older people, just, I don't know. I don't even have a word to describe it. So anyway, the point of me driving this right now is to talk about how it performs on the road. Now, the roads are more or less plowed now than they were when I went out today, but I did do this drive earlier, and it wasn't the worst. Like I said, we've got a good set of winter tires on this car, but the point is this car did pretty well. I mean, I slipped a little bit, because there's very little actual salting and de-icing that goes on in this province. So the car slips a little bit, but you put it into eco mode and it reduces the throttle, reduces the power that's being put into the engine. So you actually get a bit of driving experience and you don't slip as much. You still have to be safe, you still have to be careful. But the point of our video, kind of talked about it halfway through, is is this a good car to drive 365 days out of the year? If you're a young car enthusiast, somebody like me, you, know, you want to buy your first brand new car and you don't want to necessarily park it during the winter this is a good option not the greatest definitely not the best option but this is a good option in the sense that it's small it's maneuverable it's got good traction control overall i mean bmw has been doing traction and stability control on cars now for decades so they've got it pretty well nailed down and if you were worried about this car not being able to perform in the weather I've been pretty happy with it. Yeah, I mean, a four-wheel drive SUV certainly would have been a better choice during this week, but it's not the worst. I'm actually happy to drive this. 99.9 .9 infinite percent of people will not be driving a Mini Cooper convertible with the top down, but I'm driving this and I'm having fun with it, and it's a nice little experience. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the drive in the winter. You know, any experience is gonna be different. I know that this isn't like the biggest and I'll be all when it comes to winter driving in Mini Cooper. But again, we're doing it in minus three weather without a roof. We've got good winter tires on. I've got gloves and a hat and my legs are a little chilly, but that's okay because yeah, the heat's on 28 and it's on maximum speed here. So I am actually quite comfortable in here, despite the fact that it is freezing cold outside. We certainly had some fun this week with the Mini Cooper S. Lots of confused looks and lots of comments from other drivers while we were stopped for a coffee or at a traffic light. First off, I want to mention the fuel economy. It wasn't a like or dislike for us, but the car did 6.8 liters per 100 kilometers during our test loop in minus 11 degree weather. That's about 34 mpg in the States. Our 620 kilometer week did 8.3 liters per 100 kilometers or 28 mpg. And it's important to note that the mini engines call for premium fuel. In terms of likes though, we strongly approve of the charm and personality that comes with any Mini, and the way that it performs and handles is certainly a unique experience. BMW's iDrive is a solid infotainment setup, and the LED headlights are a nice update for 2019. Finally, the overall customization available through Mini is outstanding, giving owners the opportunity to build the exact car they want with all the little details to make it their own. But while we had fun driving around this week with the Cooper S convertible, we did have some things we'd like to see improved. The biggest issue came with our winter driving experience. The rear window defroster was useless during our drive to Montreal in light snow, making it impossible to see out the back window unless you stopped to clear it off manually. Also, while no one's going to be driving around with the top down in the winter, an option for a heated steering wheel would have been nice regardless. Wireless Apple CarPlay was once again a major frustration for us. Even after disconnecting Wi-Fi and Bluetooth from the phone's control center, the device would still remain connected any time the audio source was selected. For example, I was waiting for my daughter for school and was browsing Reddit while listening to XM Radio. But every 10 seconds, the phone would want to play some audio clip and would switch over to the media on the Mini, even after disconnecting from it. It got to the point where I just deleted the phone from the car's connection list. Some of the problems are likely with Apple, but the experience, being the only way to use Apple CarPlay on a BMW product, was awful. But overall, the 2019 Mini Cooper S Convertible was a really fun car to drive in the winter. A car like this is definitely an option for someone who lives in a climate like ours in Quebec and wants something they can drive year-round. Now, it's not the best option out there if you want a good winter car, but it also isn't the worst. I'd recommend checking it out if the charm of a mini convertible is something you might be interested in.